Apple's second generation of Pro Max Silicon is here with the brand new M2 Pro computers. This is the base model 14 inch M2 Pro and this thing is a beast. And I also have over here the M2 MacBook Air that was released earlier last year. This is also the second generation of Mac Silicon from Apple but it's more of a baseline, more of the standard processor. Now on the surface, both of these computers look rather similar, but there's actually a lot that's quite different. So I wanna take a look at everything that's different between the M2 Air and the 14 inch M2 Pro. I wanna see how the performance compares, and then I kinda of wanna talk about which one you should buy. And right before we get to that, I wanna look at this magic stand case from CaseCoo, and CaseCoo is sponsoring this video. This is a beautifully designed case for the iPhone 14 Pro and 14 Pro Max. The case looks great and also provides plenty of protection for the front glass and the rear cameras. The secret to the Magic Stand case is the hidden stand built right into the ring in the back. This stand can hold your iPhone up between 40 and 120 degrees to get the perfect angle for watching video or having a FaceTime call. There's also 48 magnets in the ring, which allow the Magic Stand to work with all of your MagSafe chargers and accessories. Check out the link and discount code in the description below to save 10% on your Magic Stand case. Let's talk about the configurations of these two machines. With the MacBook Pro, I have the 14 inch model with the M2 Pro chip. This is the baseline processor with a 10 core CPU and a 16 core GPU. It comes with 16 gigabytes of unified memory and it has a 512 gigabyte SSD inside. For the M2 Air, this is also the base model. So this comes with an eight core processor, an eight core GPU, eight gigabytes of memory, and 256 gigabytes of internal storage. Now looking at these two computers side by side, it might take you a moment to figure out which one is which if you don't know what to look for. And that's because they share an almost similar footprint with the MacBook Pro being just slightly larger and weighing about eight tenths of a pound more than the MacBook Air. And with a similar footprint comes a similar size screen. The MacBook Air has a 13.6 inch display and the MacBook Pro has a 14.2 inch display, but more on the displays in a moment. On the left side of the MacBook Pro, you're going to find USB 4, which works with Thunderbolt 3 and basically all versions of USB. You also get a MagSafe port for charging and a high impedance headphone jack. On the right side of the Pro, you get an HDMI advanced port, as Apple called it, another Thunderbolt 4 port and an SD card slot. On the left side of the MacBook Air, you get a MagSafe charging port and two Thunderbolt 3 slash USB 4 ports. Now those ports are not exactly the same as the Thunderbolt 4 ports on the MacBook Pro. There are some subtle technical differences. And on the right side of the MacBook Air, you also get a high impedance headphone jack. And one thing to mention right here is that the M2 MacBook Air can only support one external display, whereas the M2 Pro and the MacBook Pro can support up to two displays. When Apple released the new MacBook Pros in 2021, they finally got rid of the touch bar on the top and replaced that with a full-size function key row, which is great. And of course the MacBook Air never had the touch bar, but it also gets now the full-size keys as well on top. Both of these computers have Touch ID at the top right corner and the keyboards feel exactly the same. Apple's done a really good job of delivering the magic keyboard style to all of their devices and it's awesome when you're switching back and forth between devices, you don't have to relearn how you type depending on the device that you have, whether that's a MacBook or an iPad or the desktop Magic Keyboard. The trackpads on these two devices are also very similar with the trackpad on the Pro being just a hair bigger than the trackpad on the Air, which measures at about five inches by three inches. The first big difference we're going to see between these two devices is the display. The MacBook Pro has a 14.2 diagonal display with mini LEDs as a backlight. Apple calls this the Liquid Retina XDR display because this thing can get up to 1600 nits of brightness when viewing HDR content and up to 1000 nits of sustained brightness with HDR content. But with normal viewing of regular standard dynamic range content, this laptop gets up to 500 nits of brightness. The MacBook Pro also has a variable refresh rate up to 120 hertz, and Apple calls this Pro Motion. The MacBook Air has a 13.6 inch diagonal liquid retina display. Now, just because this is not an HDR compatible display doesn't mean that this display is a slouch. It's actually a really good display. It gets up to 500 nits, just like the MacBook Pro for regular use. And they both have the same wide color gamut for P3 colors and True Tone technology built in. So the difference between the two of them really comes down to if you're going to watch HDR content on your computer. If you are, the MacBook Pro is going to have that better screen for that. 
Because both of these displays go as far as they can to the outside of the edge of the lid, both of these displays do contain a notch with the camera built in. Along with the camera built into the M2 Air, there's also three microphones. And in the MacBook Pro, there are three studio quality microphones. So this is the audio and video test using these two laptops. Over here, we have the M2 Air with the 1080p camera and the three mic array. Over here, we have the 14 inch M2 Pro with the 1080p camera and the three mic studio array. Let me know below how these microphones sound between these computers. Now, both of these cameras have a 1080p camera with advanced image signal processing. However, looking at the Air, I definitely see a lot more grain than it does on the M2 Pro for some reason. So I'm curious to see what that looks like when I get it into Final Cut. But the colors look the same, the brightness looks about the same, maybe a little bit darker on the M2 Pro than the M2 Air. The M2 Air might be a little bit overblown, but let me know what you think about that as well down below. If we move down a little bit, the M2 Air has a four speaker sound system that supports spatial audio, and the MacBook Pro has a six speaker sound system that supports spatial audio. There's also a difference in the wireless systems built into these devices. With the MacBook Air, you get Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5. With the MacBook Pro, you get Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.3. Now, you're not gonna be able to really take advantage of Wi-Fi 6E or 5.3 in Bluetooth unless you have upgraded your other devices that also support that. So when testing out the wireless signal on these two devices, I essentially get the same speed but you may be able to grow into the higher wireless specs of the MacBook Pro if you keep it for a while and you upgrade your other systems like your Wi-Fi access points and other Bluetooth devices. Now, when it comes to performance between these two machines, there are going to be some differences. Again, this model of the M2 Air is the eight core processor and eight core GPU, whereas this version of the MacBook Pro has a 10 core processor and a 16 core GPU. And running just static benchmarks don't give you the whole picture, but they are a good indication of how much faster one thing is over another. In Cinebench testing, the single core score between the M2 and the M2 Pro was minor, and that's because they're essentially using the same cores. And if you're just looking at one core on both of these devices, they're basically going to be the same. But with multi-core, the M2 Pro got a score of 11,710 over the M2's 8,200. That gives the MacBook Pro a 43% increase in speed over the M2. Next, I checked out the GFX Bench and ran the 4K Aztec Ruins off-screen test, which runs both of the computers at a 4K resolution. The 16-core M2 Pro scored 78 frames per second, while the 8-core M2 scored 56 frames per second. That's about a 40% difference between these two devices, and this one has twice as many GPU cores. So the overall multi-core CPU and GPU benefits of the M2 Pro are about 40 to 43%. Now checking out the disk speed of the internal SSDs, the M2 Air's 256 gigabyte drive scored 1800 megabytes per second write and 1500 megabytes read. The M2 Pro's 512 gigabyte drive scored 3500 write and 2900 read. Now, let me just say this, that the internal drive speeds of the M2 Air have not been an issue at all since I've gotten this laptop, what, six months ago? For everyday tasks and even light productivity work, you're gonna see no issues with the speed of the drive in the MacBook Air. Now, if we put all of this together, the CPU, the GPU, and the storage speed, I can test out my Final Cut Pro export. This is a video of mine from a couple of years ago that has a heavy color grade on it just to make it a little bit more difficult. It's got titles, it's got audio, it's got lots of cuts and B-roll. The M2 Pro MacBook Pro finished the export in six minutes and 23 seconds. The M2 based MacBook Air finished the export in six minutes and 43 seconds. Now that's only a 5% difference when these computers perform very differently in regular tests. And that's because the M2 Pro is built on top of the M2, which has the same media engine encoder built in. There's only a single one in both of these, but the M2 Pro Max, the M2 Max, has two media engines built in. I also did check the thermals on the outside of the casing while running the Cinebench test. And on the MacBook Pro, I saw temperatures of about 35, 36 degrees Celsius on both the top of the case and on the bottom. 
On the MacBook Pro, I saw temperatures that were just slightly higher at about 40 degrees Celsius, and that's most likely because there is no internal fan on the M2 Air. The fans did spin up on the MacBook Pro during the Cinebench test, and it was noticeably audible. But in regular use and video export and other things that I did, there was no fan noise. The fan wasn't even on, most likely. Now, if you're not using your computer to run benchmarks constantly or export videos, if you're just wireless browsing, you can expect a battery life of up to 12 hours on the MacBook Pro and up to 15 hours on the MacBook Air. And of course, those tests are really hard to accurately gauge because there's so many differences between what you're doing, how you're doing it, and background processes that may be running. So take that with a grain of salt as always. But if you're not running heavy workloads, you should be able to get a couple more hours out of the MacBook Air. And I will say that during my time with the M2 Air, along with the M1 machines and the M1 Pros and M1 Maxes, I've not had any issue getting through a full day of battery life with regular workloads on any of those devices. So I don't think you're going to have any issue with the M2 Pro version either. So that's pretty much the differences between these two devices, except the price. The M2 Pro MacBook Pro starts at $1,999. The M2 MacBook Air starts at $1,199. So what do you get for that $800 difference? Well, you get a larger SSD, you get more memory, and you get a better screen, you get better speakers, and you get a much faster processor. And if you spec up the MacBook Air and move it up to 512 gigabytes of SSD and 16 gigabytes of memory to match the Pro, you're at about $1,600, only $400 away from the MacBook Pro, which has, again, the better screen, better speakers, and much bigger processor. And those differences may or may not matter to you at all. So who really should buy these machines? Well, in my opinion, if you are a casual user of your computer, somebody who just does the basics every day, who does web browsing, email, shopping, watches YouTube and other content, you do banking and light gaming and some photo editing with iPhoto or Apple Photos, maybe some light video editing, even up to some light video editing on Final Cut Pro, then the base model MacBook Air may suit you. It will work, it will do all of those things mostly just fine. And most of those things, it will probably do really, really well, better than any computer you've had in the past. But my issue with the base model comes down to the eight gigabytes of memory. And yes, the unified memory architecture inside of the Apple Silicon chips is really amazing and really fast, and it does more than any other eight gigabyte machine could do. But memory is memory, and applications and browser tabs and all of these things want real memory. So with my regular daily work, of everything I do with my regular day job, plus some things I have going on on the side, I definitely hit that bottleneck of the eight gigabytes on the base model machine if I'm really pushing it. And I don't mean pushing it with you know, exports of Final Cut Pro and video editing and things like that. I mean just the regular apps that I need on a regular day. Sometimes I hit that bottleneck of the eight gigabytes. The base model M2 Air is really good for today for most people, but there's just not a lot of room to grow into it. So if you're a student or a professional or getting into content creation or looking to do more with your laptop, you're a developer or going into machine learning or AI or whatever is going to demand more and more workload in the future, then you should definitely go with the MacBook Pro. There's just a lot more room in the MacBook Pro to grow compared to the MacBook Air. Plus, if you do watch HDR content or you're looking at creating HDR content, the Liquid Retina XDR display on the Pro, you just, you can't beat it. It is such a good display. And the 16 gigabytes of unified memory in these machines actually does pretty good. I ran my entire YouTube business and all of my regular day job stuff on a base model 14 inch MacBook Pro for about six months, and I did just fine. So if performance now or performance that you're going to need in the future is an issue, you should definitely look at the Pro. If you're okay with what you do right now and you don't plan on moving into more advanced computing needs, then the MacBook Air is probably going to fit you just fine. Maybe upgrade the memory. But if you do need to start specking up the Air to more storage or more memory, you're starting to get into the price territory of the Pro. And the M1 Pro from 2021 frequently goes on sale as well. So I don't really see a lot of sense in specking up the M2 Air when there are other options, whether it's refurbished from Apple or sales on Amazon. But anyway, those are all the differences between the M2 MacBook Air and the M2 Pro MacBook Pro. What do you guys think? Which one of these devices are you more interested in? Let me know below. I'm also going to be making some more videos on this M2 Pro along with the M2 Max that I have coming very soon. So if you are interested in seeing that, definitely hit subscribe. If you wanna see some of my first thoughts on this M2 Pro MacBook, check out this video right over here. Hit the thumbs up button if you liked it. 
Hit subscribe if you want, and I'll see you next time.